the Watergate Building in Washington, this is Hotline TV. Now hear Hotline editors Amy Walter and John Mercurio. Welcome to Hotline TV. I'm Amy Walter. And I'm Jen Skalka. Welcome back to Hotline TV. Well, there was so much stuff that happened over the weekend that today we're doing an entire Hotline edition, Lightning edition. All right, we have no time to waste. So if you missed this next endorsement, you must have been living mm, under a rock, or maybe you are one of those people who don't have TVs. We the people, we the people can see through all that rhetoric. We recognize that the amount of time you spent in Washington means nothing unless you're accountable for the judgments you made with the time you had. All right, Jen, can Obama use Oprah Mentum to get through and win the caucus on January 3rd? I think so, absolutely. You do? Yes. Why, why? Endless coverage here. We're rolling into into the next week and uh, and it was all Oprah and Obama all weekend. Hillary tried to trot out her mother, her daughter. <laughs> Bill's en route, right? Oh, I know. Everybody and, and nothing measures up. No one measures up. So um, I think it was a powerful visual, the o Oprah Obama. Well, it was. And you know, duo. it's so rare that an endorsement is actually um, not only defines the message, but pushes it even further, right? Correct. That she did for his message on inspiration and hope and change what three million dollars worth of TV could never have done, or three million events never could have done for him. So it's, it's an endorsement that actually pushes a message. The question, of course, is just how much momentum can this carry? You know you're going out to Iowa for the Des Moines Register debate. We're going to be talking about a lot of other things in the course of the next couple of days. Will there still be inspiration? And my other thought is maybe, just maybe, because it's Christmas time, mm -hmm. Right, we've all said, well, what does it matter that the caucuses are being held around Christmas? Maybe because people feel the spirit, right? They want to be inspired. They want to have a sense of hope that this message does draw does through resonate. even past the debate. Well, I will say this about Oprah. She sacrifices a lot personally, I think, in terms of her sort of um, equal opportunity for all um, message to her viewers by stepping forward and making a political endorsement for the first time. And it was time. a good speech. And it was a great speech. Right. And it was sort of, it was a very heartfelt speech. She she confessed that she was nervous a bit. Um, Obama advisor said she was up until the middle of the night um, editing and re-editing. So this was a big deal for her personally, I think, as well. And I think voters are responding to that. Look, 50,000, 60,000 people came out in Iowa, South Carolina, and New Hampshire to see the two of them. So I think so, that says something. Not bad. All right. Yes. Another big story this weekend, Mike Huckabee, his stance on AIDS patients. Let's roll this clip. It now turns out that when you ran for the Senate back in 1992, you called for quarantining AIDS patients. You opposed increased federal funding to find a cure. And you also said that homosexuality was a, quote, sinful lifestyle that could pose a dangerous health risk. Do you stand by any of that now, Governor? Chris, I didn't say that we should quarantine. I said it was the first time in health, public health protocols <laughs> that when we had an infectious disease and we didn't really know just how extensive and how uh, dramatic it could be and the impact of it, that we didn't isolate the carrier. Is this something that's going to permanently damage his campaign? I mean, I think what we know about Mike Huckabee is this. There's a lot out there. And nobody has dug into his record the way they have all the other candidates because he was an asterisk for so long. I don't know how many more stories like this there are out there. We have the parole case. We have the AIDS story. We have, I'm sure, lots of other things that are waiting to, to get forward mm -hmm. and again, come forward. And the question is, just like with Oprah slash Obama, how much longer can this inspirational message last Mike Huckabee going for the next 28 days in Iowa? Will he get undercut at these debates where he, for the first time, has to be on the def defense instead of the offense? Mm -hmm. I don't know. but. I think he's speaking directly to his base, um, and these are folks who want to hear what he's saying. They don't mind what he said 15 years ago about folks with AIDS. Um, I don't know how this would serve him in a general election. Should he win the nomination, I'd, I'd be a little more concerned for him <laughs> um, then. But but I don't I don't think those guys are batting an eyelash over this. this one. Yeah. All right. Last but not least, Giuliani, of course, on Meet the Press Sunday. Let's take a better look. Yeah. I, and unfortunately, I've had my own sins that I've had to confess and deal with and try to overcome and so I'm very very uh, empathetic with people I and mean, we're all we're all imperfect human beings 
uh, uh, struggling to uh, to try to be better. He got pummeled by Russell. Yeah, I mean, this, this was one. just this was just an absolute pummel fest. But what was fascinating about the entire hour was maybe two policy questions were even raised. This was all personal Giuliani baggage. Bag. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And if you're if you're Hillary Clinton, aren't you saying to yourself right now, well? Maybe that's not so bad. This run against Rudy Giuliani, right? I oh mean, yeah, you're asking. His you're asking Santa my for that. You know, <laughs> that's all. And I say, please let it be Rudy. Right. <laughs> I mean, there's not. We don't even have to get into what his views are on certain issues. We don't even have to talk about whether there's a third party candidate running as a pro lifer. Right. We now have taken off all of the Clinton liabilities, mm -hmm. at least on the personal questions. If he doesn't want to talk about his stuff, it's going to be really hard. For for him to talk about her, her stuff, yeah. correct. So. Um, and he clearly didn't have lines at the ready this weekend on Bernard Carrick, um, on the Judy Nathan security detail. Well, he does have lines on the ready. They're just not. And they just, just well, that's the question: is are they, they fall short? Back? Yeah. I, on Carrick, no matter what the question is, I made a mistake. I'm living up to it. So that's the way he's trying to, to you know, uh, contrast himself with the Clinton campaign mm -hmm. that will never, you know, this like they won't admit mistakes. I will. Then on the. Um, on the Judy Nathan thing, he keeps coming back to, it wasn't my decision, it was the police department. There wasn't were my decision, threats. their police department. There were threats. Until somebody can prove otherwise, that argument works. But the fact that they just keep coming up and coming up and coming up, there's a question about judgment. Right. That is a bigger problem right. for him in the future. I think that's true. It's yeah. a character question now. Character question. Character. All right. Well, whew, I am sweating <sighs> now. That was so fast. Tough, tough stuff. But, Thank you for coming on. My pleasure. Host. Looking forward to having you back. And thank you for watching Hotline TV. See you later.